Charlie, welcome to the pod with me. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself and your role at AWS? Denise, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Charlie Sanderson and here at AWS, I look after our global industries technology partner team. And we have a team of specialists that cut across multiple different industries, including financial services. And the focus of our team is working with our partners to build together and to grow our incremental revenue together through go-to-market motions. And today we are going to discuss uh, the joint journey we've had with uh, since 2016 and how it has evolved since and what's looking into the future. Fantastic. So Denise, I know that we've had a really long standing partnership. I think you mentioned for over eight years. Um, I've been looking after our technology partners here at AWS for about four years now. So you predate me. So it would be great to hear you talk about how our partnership initially started and then we can have a chat about how that's evolved over time. Yes, yes, almost eight years. So we are approaching the eight year mark. And uh, it was uh, it was maybe the toughest discussion during the first six months from founding Enfuse. Uh, how are we going to build uh, and who are we going to partner with? Uh, we quite early started to lean into AWS, even though for the financial industry, uh, cloud was new and we were not 100% certain, will the industry be ready now or will we be pioneers that were just too early? But anyway, we decided we want to build a globally scalable company and therefore we had no other choice than going cloud uh, and uh, like fast forwarding eight years, that was the perfect timing to be a pioneer for the financial industry. And uh, today we have overcome so many of the early challenges that we were facing back in 2016. And one of the things we were just talking about, I think, before we sort of started this recording was actually about our culture and how, like, and how that mirrors one another. Um, I've, I've heard you say you're pioneers a couple of times, and we love to say that as well. We think we are pioneers, not only of the cloud, but also in terms of how we want to innovate around customer experience. Um, our focus uh, is on hiring builders who want to identify customer challenges and want to make a difference and change that for the better. Yeah, and that's been the saying from day one, like why Enfuse? Why would customer partner with us? What's the difference? And it's always like, it's one thing to solve technical side of things uh, that you have at hand for the moment, but that's almost boring. So it's much more fun to look at what do we think the world will look like next? What will be the challenges to overcome in a year, in two, three, five years? And that then means that our customers, what are they facing? What are they anticipating? And how can they pioneer on their side? And how can we be, be there uh, and help them uh, through that journey? And I guess if we rewind eight years, how did AWS help you build on the cloud? And what made you select us? I think it comes down to, again, people to people. <laughs> I think you had a great uh, team in place. I think even though we were really early stage startup, uh, we got great connections and it was easy to approach the team. And they, like you had the startup program already then. I know that it's been evolving since. But just uh, getting that attention, getting that real understanding of how the partnership can look, not only today, like one thing is to get started, but how can you help us scale globally? Because that was the ambition from day one. So what would that mean? What does it mean when us as a startup come and ask that for, from the team? And they were so supportive of the journey we had ahead of us and then with a great program that was appealing and that actually did help us a lot the first year. Yeah, and I think we have quite a lot of programs that they've definitely evolved over time, but they are focused on helping early stage startups um, and scale ups partner with AWS and scale globally. So Charlie, I've given you 
the background of uh, how important this partnership have been from an Enfuse angle. Uh, and I think from startup and scale up companies, it's easy to find the value partnering with uh, big companies, global companies. But can you give us some insights in why this is interesting from, from your point of view? Why do you support startups and scale ups so well that you actually are doing? I think that's a great question, Denise, and I'm going to perhaps approach it from two or maybe three different angles. So perhaps, first of all, why don't we talk a little bit about the overall market for fintechs? Um, so there was a McKinsey um, report that came out in October looking at um, the paradigm shift that's going on in fintech at the moment. And what's really interesting, if you start to look at the data behind that, is they're calling out that the 20, that 23 publicly traded fintechs are worth over 550 billion. I mean, that, that's a big number, right? Like that's so a big, big. That's a big. That's a big number, right? They're also saying that the fintech community are going to grow 15% year over year from 2022 to 2018, versus 6% for traditional financial institutions. So. If I look at that, what that tells me is we should care about startups and scale-ups like yourselves because you are going to be the companies of the future. The second um, thing I think that we should perhaps touch on is culturally, and, and I think I referred to this a little bit earlier, but culturally we are a company of builders and our focus is on identifying customer problems and friction points and understanding how we can transform that. So I think there's a really natural cultural fit um, between ourselves um, and startups such as your, sorry, scale-ups. I apologize, scale-ups such as yourselves. And I think within that, we're also unusually long-term focused, mm -hmm. um, as are you. So what we're thinking about is how can we create the customer experiences that meet the needs of the future generation? And third one? Well, I think the, the other thing that we are all seeing is not only generational shifts in, in expectations around customer experience, um, we've now got the Gen Z community, which I think born in what, uh, 1990s. So these, these people have not uh, ever experienced life without the internet. No. They, they've never had a corded phone. Um, and I think within that, what we can acknowledge is that there is this huge transformational shift in customer expectations from financial services providers. Yeah. The, the, the pandemic, which I think we would be remiss not to mention, yeah. has meant that between tw 2019 and 2020, the US saw a 40% increase in e-commerce. Yeah. And according to Adobe Analytics, this year, e-commerce in the US is gonna hit $1 trillion. So what we're seeing is this shift to digital, this shift to um, changing expectations from consumers, and we're seeing that accelerate. And I think within that, we're also seeing those customers of the future seek integrated, hyper-personalized customer experiences. I was almost cutting in earlier on you because you mentioned there the pandemic. Uh, you, you were just going there because that was for me as well. Like I think that was... Uh, it showed us all kind of how fast things can be evolving. Like yeah. we've been thinking that uh, it's been evolving so fast for the last 10, 15, 20 years. And then hits the pandemic and that just the leap of <laughs> digitalization happening in one year. Uh, I don't know if it's scary or if it's fascinating, uh, but it did show us where we are heading at and with the younger generations like i'm having kids you are having kids and the, they are growing up in a world that we didn't know existed when we were growing up and the demands of the children today it's going to be fascinating to see how the world will look when they are ruling the world <laughs> or will it be fascinating or scary let's see when we get there I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And I was thinking again, you know, the pandemic, I think, I think the, the stat again, I'll, I'll refer to the McKinsey article I referenced that earlier, but 73% of consumer banking interactions now are digital. Yeah. 
Um, and, and I think that if we take that in the context of not just pace of change, but pace of innovation, we're now seeing that sort of fundamental acceleration. Yes. And that is then coming back to the founder story of Enfuse and what we really wanted to do, why we got into this business was that we wanted to help the many innovating financial services. Because uh, both me and my co-founder, we come from the financial industry. Uh, we've been working at the Nordic big banks and we saw the rising number of fintechs coming and challenging the banks uh, with new innovative services that we had no way we could keep up with that uh, back then. And then we were like, why can't we keep up? What could we be doing to be part of that and help many be part of that innovation? So it was like, yeah, let's build a company that help others innovate with fast pace and keep up with the modern uh, demands and younger generations. Charlie, you asked me earlier, why did we pick AWS uh, eight years ago? Uh, but I'm asking you, why should companies, founders uh, of today choose AWS? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And you perhaps uh, gave a much better explanation than I will do. Um, however, AWS spends a lot of time working across the founder community to make sure that we are uh, visible to and supporting um, founders. We have a series of programs that cut across functional and industry areas that help partners accelerate um, through bringing them investment, through bringing them resources, through bringing them technical skills and mentorship to help them to drive to their business outcomes. Uh, we call that our Accelerate program. That's now definitely evolved and it covers cross industry and subjects like Gen AI and machine learning. Equally, if we take a step back and we think about the foundations that founders are looking for, which is um, to have sustainable, profitable growth, what we enable is for, found, for early stage startups and scale ups to have efficient costs. So you only pay for what you use uh, within AWS to scale quickly and efficiently. So to scale up and to scale down, which we both know is really important in the world of payments um, to address spikes at different times of year, to go global, knowing that the infrastructure that they're going to be working with is highly available, scalable, and meets local regulatory requirements, and to achieve that kind of regulatory and compliance support from our experts regionally. Yeah, I think one thing that I wanna uh catch on to there is the scalability on demand. And uh, like, maybe I'm not now talking about founders or startups of today, but coming from the industry, I remember the years when Christmas was approaching and from the bank perspective, it was always a little nervous. Have we done the peak testings? Will we uh, be able to meet the customer demands going with, uh, and it's not online shopping, it was like just car transactions at peak volumes around very limited uh, dates in December. And the investment, upfront investments, you had to make sure that you have done in, well in time to meet that. And then it was again running fairly low <laughs> coming months after that peak. and how today that is for me even like how, how did we cope with that because it should be on demand and that is how it is working today and that's a great benefit for business owners and that's how you like run sustainable business uh, i think it's a big part of it yeah and, and let's face it consumers nowadays they just expect everything to work and they're incredibly intolerant so denise we've talked a lot about the history of our partnership and how we've worked together over the last nearly eight years. What's next for Envoos? Yeah, what's next? I, I think I mentioned it really early on in the conversation that when me and my co-founder decided to go on this journey together, we set an ambition to be a global company one day. And uh, it's one thing to like say it out loud, let's build a global company. It's another thing to actually be doing it. And there are quite many steps 
uh, to get there, especially within the financial industry. But for me, what's ex really exciting going into 2024 is that that globalization has never been as close uh, as it is today. And we feel comfortable uh, to start taking the steps outside of Europe uh, together with uh, some of our customers. So I think we are going on a new journey, like continuing on the existing journey, but it's taking a new direction and new leaps of growth. And uh, I love having unknown in front of me. And even though I know what's coming, it's still a little unknown as well. Uh, and that's really exciting. So I'm, I'm so ready for 2024. <laughs> so I, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> so obviously, going global uh, is what's ahead for us uh, and uh, at AWS you've seen companies go global <laughs> how is that happening how are you supporting companies and we're like really us? we're really excited to help you on that journey and I think you know AWS has 31 uh, 31 regions 99 availability zones globally including five more regions planned and 15 more availability zones we have a global infrastructure to support you in going global and to go global at pace within that we also have 200 fully featured services that really enables you to scale your infrastructure and your architecture across the world and we bring to you experts across regulation, across compliance to help you in that journey. So this is how we're supporting partners such as yourselves in going global. We are so much looking for that. <laughs> yeah. And I think what's really exciting is how that enables you to not only go global, but also to innovate at pace so that you're responding to the needs of some of those local markets quickly.